In problem seven, we're given the formula P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And we're told to solve it for T1. So here's what we do. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. We can cross multiply. We have a proportion here, one fraction equal to another. So if we cross multiply, we get P1 times T2 equals P2 times T1. And we're told to solve this for T1, so in order to isolate T1, I need to divide both sides by P2. And then the P2s cancel out over here, leaving me with T1 all by itself. And T1 ends up being equal to P1 times T2 over P2. This formula, incidentally, is one of the gas laws. It describes the behavior of a gas. If you have a sample of air, for example, at a certain temperature and a certain pressure, and you increase the temperature, that will also increase the, the pressure. But it does so in a way such that the ratio of pressure to temperature is always the same. In example 8, we have M2 times G equals M1 plus M2 times A. This is another equation from physics. It shows up in some problems dealing with Newton's laws of motion. M1 and M2 are just two masses. G is the acceleration due to gravity. It's just a number. And A is the acceleration of, of the masses. We're told to solve this for M1. So here's what we'll do. I'll start by distributing the A over on the right. So the left side is still M2G. The right side is M1A plus M2A. And then I'll subtract M2A from each side. And those terms cancel out on the right. And that leaves me with M1A equal to this. So I'll write M1A equals M2G minus M2A. And then to solve for M1, I just have to divide by A. So dividing by A on both sides leaves me with M1 on the left, and it leaves me with M2G minus M2A over A on the right. And that's my answer. I could rewrite this with the numerator here with the M2 factored out. But I'll go ahead and leave it in this form. That's acceptable too. This is now solved for M1.